The BIAS uh, program is a partner, public and uh, private partnership undertaking in the country. That basically includes the government together with the private sector uh, represented by NGOs, uh, the microfinancing institutes, the fabrication institutes, and with all of us focusing on the benefits for the users. And who the users are will be magnified as our presentation goes. About the biogas program, this started off in 1992 with support from uh, through SNV, the funding coming from DGIS. Uh, in 19, through 1997 to 2003, we had the third phase where KFW came in, and the government of Nepal also started providing the funding for the program. Since uh, 2003 to 2009, the fourth phase, the BSP, this program has been implemented by an NGO which is known as the Biogas Sector Partnership Nepal. It's a group of, uh, it's a family member of the SNV who were working on implementing the biogas program and then was, and uh, with, uh, uh, with, with the changes in the program of the SNV, this group was capacitated and set up as a separate NGO to continue the program. And since 2005, uh, we have started earning the, C, uh, the CDM fund with the first uh, lot of uh, the biogas systems being registered under this program. It started off with 90,000 programs, but today we have more than 54,000 programs that have been registered under the CDM. I'll be talking more about the funding that comes from me. And in 2007, we also got a separate project under the gold standard, also known as the VR project, which is being funded by WWF. Besides these, we have several undertakings by individual isolated NGOs and uh, even um, international organizations which are supporting the bias program in different ways. And uh, my presentation on the status of the present biogas will not capture these, because these are very much isolated. And in 2009, we have been starting to work on uh, the on developing. I mean, the fourth phase is in progress, and presently we are working on uh, formulating the fifth phase of the biogas program. The cumulative biogas uh, plants constructed so far, it is nearly 250,000 plants, which will be another milestone in the history of the country. Of course, there are several ups and downs. This is because of the political situation in the country, and also the availability of the funds. And once you have reached uh, the accessible areas, it is more difficult to go into those areas where the infrastructure is, does not exist. So, and overcoming those challenges has also, uh, in a little way, inhibited the uh, progress in the program. So, as you can see, biogas covers the whole of the country, right from the bottom, which is the lowlands, to the highlands, the foothills of the Everest, the Sorokubo. So you can see that this program covers all 75 districts of the country and all three geographic regions. The approach has been public-private partnership and uh, promoting the private sector. We believe in making the market work, that is as a demand-driven pro uh, program with uh, technical assistance and subsidy. Of course, many would take subsidy as a slow poison, but in our case, it is a must in order to enable the people to uh, purchase the different construction materials, which are otherwise uh, the cost of which is very high. We emphasize on the quality of the goods and the services that are provided to the users, and we support the easy and wider credit availability through the microfinancing institutes, and also gradually scaling down of certain activities and um, taking up in areas uh, depending upon um, how well the program has penetrated in the, in the specific areas. We also believe in making the market work for the poor. Uh, the pro-pro orientation and social inclusion is there in the program. We have increased emphasis uh, for linking up with the microfinance credit and also with other rural development activities. Uh, the market penetration and high operation rate. 
um, 20, around 25 percent only of the technically potential areas uh, is uh, met by this uh, technology and it is all based on uh, cattle dung. We cover around 2,800 VDCs and all 75 districts and, and the operational rate. I would like to say as a member of the BSP Nepal, I would like to stick to 94. But when figures like 98% come from the World Bank invigilators, we feel very proud. <laughs> And 63 to 69 percent of the uh, of the systems are connected to the toilet, and of course uh, um, this has implications on the sanitation of the environment. 74 to 86 percent users uh, they use slurry. Now this difference in the percentage is also depending on on the area, whether it's the lowland or the highland. So uh, that's why I've given a range. And around 91% of the biogas users, they express their satisfaction. Now, the energy situation in the country, of course. Women, 87% collecting I mean, uh, the biomass. 87% of the country depends upon biomass. They use women as peddlers, I would say, on the highways that are very dangerous steep hills, uh, which are more dangerous when the monsoon comes, and they are the main managers of the biogas, and they spend around four to five hours of the day in this work. They use very inefficient stoves, and of course the implication is that they suffer from uh, indoor air pollution related uh, diseases like uh, um, uh, the respiratory problems of the respiratory uh, system and also prolapses. Then, of course, with the biogas, we have a clean and smoke-free kitchen, having a, uh, leading to better health and reduced drudgery. And on the other hand, also enables income generation through uh, the production in the kitchen garden. Now, what are the key elements that have supported the gender mainstreaming? I would like to talk only about the fourth phase. The overall objective is to disseminate the biogas systems and to mainstream renewable energy solution for the rural areas by addressing poverty, social inclusion, and regional imbalance issues. Here you will not see the word gender, but we have found the word social inclusion as an entry point for the program. We have been trying to get the word gender into it, but then because of the system, the government is a tripartite thing, and we need to really uh, get into you know, some uh, uh, more of a lobby uh, to get a change into this. But uh, while we are stepping into the fifth phase, we will see to it that the word gender is also included here. Uh, and quality control, of, within the quality control objectives, this is where we do find the word male and female. We try to ensure that at least 90% of the systems that are owned by both male and female, do a, uh, they are able to operate the system and also, the, uh, the system is in uh, good condition. Now, in each of the phase, we have been doing different work. If you go to uh, phase one, this was the phase where we were working on the technology and capacity development. You know, we did the, uh, try to address the energy needs of the areas, try to develop different appliances, build the cap uh, cap capacities of masons and supervisors and extension workers. In phase two, we were trying to promote the financing. Focus was on the financing. And then we tried to develop financing mechanisms and different promotional materials, focusing rather on the benefits for women. And the third, that was institutional strengthening. Here we tried to build up technical uh, as well as leadership capacity of the men and women, and then also to support in setting up the enterprises by providing them soft loans uh, in the beginning. And in the last phase, we tried to improve the technologies so that it was more uh, user-friendly, focusing on the women, of course, and then also to enhance capacities of the women and also to expand the project areas. Now, the highlights of the strategy, first of all, was to encourage the private sector. The consultant companies, they are the major at the biggest, uh, uh, at the closest partnership the organization has. Special trainings are provided to both men and women, and we also uh, encourage the inclusion of women as, 
as a construction company owners and also to become members of the association. Last year we had one, the executive board uh, ended their tenure and this year also we have representatives, women representatives in the association. And of course the code of conduct is in place. And uh, we also uh, encourage them to provide security for the female staff. In terms of fabrication units, we, we look into providing them uh, important uh, necessary information uh, with respect to the user's needs so that while modifying the appliances, there's uh, a compliance in the with the suggestions that is provided to them. And in terms of NGOs, we have a selection criteria such that they have experiences working on the gender aspects and they also have past experiences. And we also focus on the need for gender assessment in any contractual work that we do, be it for assessment of the program, be it for training, and different activities that are included in the uh, program. In terms of MFIs, we coordinate also with the women-operated MFIs, and we provide seed money for loans. And we also um, we are happy to inform that these MFIs they go from door to door to call, to disseminate uh, to this disperse the loans as well as to collect the interest, so which is very much acceptable to the women users. And uh, the next one is on coordination with respect to promotion, awareness and training. We coordinate with the government organizations, with the NGOs, organizations that, are, that focus on women development, association of the biogas construction companies, and also uh, local private development organizations. In terms of financing, the poor and marginalized groups are focused. Here we coordinate with the uh, Poverty Elevation Fund of uh, uh, USA, and then also with the women's uh, credit groups and conservation organizations such as WWF. And we have the extension programs where we coordinate with culture, uh, the agriculture organizations because uh, as explained by our earlier speakers, the slurry is very good for agricultural production. And we also uh, coordinate with the community organizations for, develop, uh, for income gener uh, for capacitating the users in terms of uh, income generation activities, other than that, those that are directly related with the uh, biogas system itself, and of course with the association of biogas construction companies, because they are the uh, primary. Um, uh, promoters of the technology and they also do the marketing of the system and of course the self-help groups. Then we also coordinate with the national institutes and the stove and appliances units to conduct the different uh, research and development with respect to the technology itself. And then we have the also uh, the next strategy is tracking down the changes where we do periodic monitoring and we see we uh, look into the growth in the female masons and also capacitating them to uh, become supervisors, to be owners of the uh, companies, to conduct quality control uh, work and also to head uh, microfinance institutes. And we do the database management where we use gender sensitive indicators and these are very much compulsory. And on reporting and dissemination, we focus on gender sensitive issues and then also users' perspectives, especially appreciation of uh, female staff in the, uh, as users as well as uh, constructing the systems as is an important are important indicators for us. Next is we undertake technical. We have carried out uh, technical changes in the model itself. The one uh, to the uh, um, this one here. You uh, people who are familiar with the biogas uh, technology, uh, will see that this is the inlet here, and this is the outlet. It has a vertical side here, which makes it difficult for cleaning out. When the gas is formed, on the other hand, you don't only have slurry, you also have scum that settles at the bottom, which needs to be cleaned out, otherwise you reduce the volume of the system. So in this, we see the difficulty in cleaning out the scum, which we have changed. It has a curved bottom and a sloped um, uh, bottom. This, in, this sees 
to it that the volume of the digester does not reduce very fast. And the other advantage is that it's easy to clean out. So this work can be carried out by the women as well as, in the earlier one, one had to depend on the men. But in the second one, the women themselves, they can use the bamboo with a scrubber and pull out the scum. So these are uh, some of the activities that are undertaken uh, in view of the female users. And then achievements, what have we achieved? Our technology is need-based. The users are better informed. The sustainability of the program is assured because we have intensive user training. And we have better outreach of the program because it focuses on the user's needs. The recovery of loan is high. And it, be it has become an answer. Uh, this system has become an uh, intervention which leads uh, to clean energy for the rural areas. These are some of the key activities we do. First is awareness building. What do we do? Our purpose is to create motivation so that it leads to adoption of the technology and of course finally the installation. The gender mainstreaming activities adopted here is we focus on the benefits, especially for women. We motivate uh, the clients through female mo uh, mobilizers and motivators as explained by the advantages have already been explained earlier. The awareness campaign is there for men and women and we encourage women to uh, own uh, the systems. The outcome is effective network and the interaction that goes with the beneficiaries help us in uh, overcoming uh, barriers. And altogether we have 23% women now owning the systems and uh, you'll see the total numbers there as well. And uh, the second is on financing. Uh, this leads towards installation of the plant, of course, and we provide, we work towards loan provisions encouraged through women's group, and 36% women uh, cooperatives have been mobilized, and you can also see the absolute figures at the bottom. The third is on construction and operation. Uh, the agenda mainstreaming uh, activities is to encourage women to take up masonry and supervision as well as management of the biogas uh, companies. Special trainings are given to them on management, business plan, and leaderships. And also we award the best mason supervisors and entrepreneurs. A panel award is given to men and women separately. We have nine female-owned bike uh, uh, companies. And all together with the branches, we also have different branches. Uh, together with that, we have 28 companies that are owned by women. Uh, the extension, in terms of extension services, uh, um, is the, on promotion, the operations, the after sales, and the trainings that need to be carried out, to, uh, keeping in view the uh, requirements for sustainability, and we give higher preference uh, for the women as well. And in terms of after sales, it's mandatory for us to uh, do the quality control for three years and then we have nearly 23 women that are working as uh, quality controllers uh, in comparison to 677 men and in terms of training uh, we have uh, extra intensive uh, incentives that are provided to women and altogether we, we have eight female masons and 44 supervisors in the field uh, and in terms of monitoring uh, we make sure that uh, women sensitive uh, indicators are included. We have an annual user survey that is carried out and it, it is within the framework which includes uh, gender sensitive um, indicators. Then of course dissemination is there. Here we have developed different case studies focusing on the impact on men, women and the community. I'm just rushing through it because uh, I have been getting the vibes from so much at a long time. No, no, no. Of course, the constraints are there. There, there still exists like social uh, resistance as we move, uh, as we have covered uh, those areas which are more accessible and we are going to more remote areas where the social binding, the social norms are very much stringent. 
So the social resistance is still there concerning the involvement of women uh, in the sector as leaders. The low acceptance of women as technical workers is another barrier we need to cross. And the access to financial resources for women is very low in these areas. And we are trying to close the present gap in meeting the energy needs because this technology is not able to meet all the needs. For example, room heating is not possible. And the higher you go, the room heating becomes a, a need, growing need. As I, uh, now seeing is believing, so let me just rush through it. The domestic cooking and lighting, as you can see, the picture on the top is from Solukumbu, which is on the, foot, uh, on the foothill hills near the Everest. And then this is a domestic uh, cooking again in the uh, community. As you can see, this uh, stove, the traditional stove, is being replaced by biogas. This was just taken immediately after the system was constructed. So you can still see cakes of uh, dung on the walls of the house. And then there is a happy woman whose kitchen is clean and the, the blue flame from the stove. Here from the lowlands. That was from the lowlands. The only picture was from the lowlands. This is in the highlands where you can still see the snow o over the biogas digester. The gas is still there, of course. Uh, it's a little bit low, but they have uh, they can make use of it for cooking and lighting. Uh, then this is a little uh, te uh, technical improvement which we made. You don't need a solar or you don't need any sort of insulation which applies lumps, use some of money. We are just making use of materials that are available around them. Grass, the slurry from the digester, we mix the two, pack it up on top of the digester and it keeps the system warm long enough uh, through the winter. And come summer, they use this which has been composted for manure. And uh, come winter, again, they pack up the system. So it's a cycle. How many animals are needed? Uh, we promote the system for uh, households that have at least one cattle head because it is attached to the toilet as well. Otherwise, two. That is the minimum requirement. So we have interactions with the women at different levels. And you can see the female masons being trained as well as they are at work. And then we also honor achievements. This is a woman who was being honored for uh, excelling in the job when we reached the 200,000 milestone. And these are the experts <laughs> with the awards. I guess you recognize a few of them. And they are on the, <laughs> in the hall. And these are with joy and pride from the users. This is Nima Sherpa from uh, Solo. She just could not believe that gas could be produced from uh, cattle dung. Now she's using it for lighting and cooking. It saves her money from uh, having to buy kerosene. And she's being able to put uh, this available energy for different uses within the house. This is Jit Narayan Chaudhary from Sunsari from the lowlands. He's very happy that uh, we have initiated the biogas plant and the people do come uh, and uh, take their advices on how to use it and what are the benefits of the system. Then this is another uh, man, this two <laughs> sides to go. This is an old uh, gentleman who is very happy with uh, uh, using the slurry because the production has been high and then he is very much now against the chemical fertilizers which he was using earlier in the past. And then we have the best compliment from Kalpana and Lakshman Gimiri from Lalitpur. Biogas has been a blessing to our village, uh, to the village farmers. This is the best compliment we have received after 19 years. <laughs> <laughs> and well, biogas has several things to offer. Clean kitchen, sanitation, and along the line we have reduced dependence on uh, fuel wood. That means reduced drudgery for the women. No indoor pollution, that is improved health and reduced child mortality. Clean sanitation, enhanced live, uh, livelihood empowerment comes from there. And then the CDM project, mere funds that are available for upscaling. So, why not promote the use of biogas based on waste other than cattle dung as well? Because uh, when we piloted a study 
uh, for um, this is the last one. <laughs> so, we were piloting uh, this uh, energy planning uh, program, uh, which integrated the climate change and the gender issues. We learned that some ethnic groups they were not rearing the cattle. So now, if you could promote systems that uh, uh, were running on waste other than cattle dung, it would be very good. We need to encourage the use of institutional and community-based uh, systems because land is not available to everyone. Uh, and then we need to foster the biogas as a means of uh, solid waste management because that would increase the availability of materials uh, as well as to improve the environment. And we need to develop women as barefoot engineers because the men are migrating, there is no one to look after the village, and then women as barefoot engineers would uh, enable the sustainability of the system because with CDM the monitoring is very stringent and we could continue the monitoring, uh, strict monitoring even after the men have left the villages. Thanks for your attention and namaste.